Hello everybody, how are you? In today's video, we will talk about one of the most important diagram that use in system analysis. This diagram called data flow diagram or DFD. In this video, we will talk about context diagram and also level zero diagram and also child diagram. We will talk about all the things that you will need to know to make your own DFD of any system uh, you have. This diagram in front of us right now is a context diagram. In context diagram, we just have external entities. These are the external entities shapes. And also we have the main process and also this main process can be called process zero and also can be called main process. Okay, and third, the data flow. This is the data flow. So in context diagram, I will just have external entities, main process, and data flows. I will not have any data store. This is data store. And also, after that, I will go to level zero diagram. Level zero diagram is an explanation of what happened in the main process or in the number zero process. So level zero diagram is the explanation of the zero process. Okay, let's go and know more about data flow diagram. First, we have external entity. External enti entity has this shape. This shape is double square or double rectangle okay second thing uh, with us is the shape of process the process has this shape rounded rectangle and have this number the number of the process and also we have some important information you should know that any system should have at most the maximum number of the process that i can put in the system is seven and some references say that you can make nine processes but we recommend you to just make seven processes at maximum okay after that we have data store data store has this shape and this shape called open ended rectangle and we have also data flow and data flow can be has two directions like this and also can be one direction like this data flow. Let's go and make our Owen DFD diagram. First, we have this system. This system is accounting system. This account is our accounting system is dealing with just two entities, two external or outside entities those entities are the employee that will get the salary from the system and the hr department that will provide the system about the information of this employee and our cheat of this employee to make the system calculate the salary of this employee so in system like that i will have just two external entities two external entities like HR department and employee. And also, if I have any internal entity, like someone who uh, sit on the computer inside the system, this is internal entity. We are not allowed to draw internal entities, okay? So we will not draw any internal entity or we will not make any internal entity inside our DFD diagram, okay? Just external entities. And here we want to make context diagram. Context have just external entities and the main process, process zero. In the main process, I will write the name of the system like this accounting system. And I will have my data flow like this. The employee should give the system the information about him and also will get from the system the paycheck and the HR department will get from the system the employee ID and will give the system 
the hour sheet of this employee. After that, let's go to diagram zero. Diagram zero have seven to eight. Seven or eight. Can it be less than seven? Yes, it can be less than seven. Okay, let's go and see how can we do level zero diagram. Level zero diagram, as you see, we will draw seven or less than seven processes. And we will also draw some employee files or data stores. And also, we will use the external entities that we have used before in the context diagram. Okay? Here, in this diagram zero, we have to concentrate about some problems. If any of these problems have found here, or P here, or exist here, we will not get the final result in the exam. Because any of this problem mean that you don't write your DFD diagram by a will way, by the right way. Okay, let's see the first problem with us. The first problem is if the process's number is more than nine. This is the first problem. Second problem with us, external entity can't directly deal with external entity or other external entity like this. If you want external entity to call or to deal with another external entity, you can do it through through some process or a process like this. Three, data store can't call or deal with external entity or with another data store directly. But if you want to make this data store call or contact with the external entity, you can do it through a process. Okay, so external entity and data store can't directly contact. And also external entity and external entity can't directly contact. And also data store and data store can't directly contact. For the name of the processes, the name of the processes should begin with a verb like this, create, get, calculate, print, update, and so on. Five, the name of external entity should be name, should be name, not verb. And also the data flow should be name, not verb. And the name of the data store should have something like file, record, anything refer to storage. So you have to put a name that refer to a storage, like this employee file, file here. But before we continue, I want to tell you something that uh, in our academy here, we provide uh, programming, cor programming courses for beginners and uh, kids. If you want to take any course like face-to-face -face courses on Zoom virtually or uh, pre-recorded -pre videos course, you can also take this course. Our prices isn't high. You can just send a message to our business number in WhatsApp. I will put this number in the description of the video. And also you can message or send a message to the page, our page or academy page in Facebook or to me, my private page in Facebook. I will put all these links in the description of the video. So just go to the description and contact us and we will make you a very good programmer in the future, inshallah. The fifth problem with us is we cannot make the process. Just have data like this. This data, interpret it. And this data, get out of it. If I have all the data, interpret it, and no data, get out of it, it's wrong. We have to make some data get in and some data get out of the process. And also, 
the data that get in should be different than the data that get out. Why? Because the function of the process is to make some processes on the data. So the data after making process on it will be changed. So will have another form. So like what you see right now, employee information become employee record. Okay? But here in something like data store, I can make the data that get in similar to the data that get out because the data store don't make any process on the data. Okay? Like this, employee record and employee record. Problem number six, no internal entities. Any internal entity should not be drawn. Okay? Problem number seven and the most important problem here and we have to focus in it so much, so much. Okay? This problem is talking about the balance of the diagram. So what is the meaning of the balance of the diagram? You can see now each HR department. Get in employee, employee ID and get out of it hours cheat. Okay? Again, the employee ID get in the HR department and the hours cheat get out the HR department. Let's go again to the, uh, the context diagram and see HR department. Get in employee ID and get out hours cheat. It's the same. The same as con uh, level zero diagram. Yeah, because it's balanced. Okay? So everything here is the same as the context diagram because it's balanced. Like here also, employee get uh, the data get out of it is employee information and the data get in is employee paycheck. Let's see. Employee information and employee paycheck. And we will use this balance also when we made another diagram called the child diagram. Let's see what is the child diagram uh, and see how can we do the balance there as we do it here. Child diagram is when I want to make some sub processes of any process. So I have this process. And I want to make some sub processes of this process. How can I do something like that? I can do something like that by making a child diagram. Let's see what is this child diagram. Child diagram like this. I made three children of process number four. And those three children called 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. And also, it's balancing. We have here hours worked and net pay as here. Net pay and hours worked. Like what you see, this is process four. Okay? And also, if I want to make a child diagram of this process, I can make this. How? I can make this by made a children of this and I should make it balanced and I will call the children of it like 4.2.1, 4.2.2, 4 4.2.3 and so on. Okay, we finished our lesson today or our lecture today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and see you later. Goodbye. Assalamu alaikum.